Good evening, Theo Trade. This is Corey Rosenblum, and you're watching the Theo Notley video for the 7th of July, 2020. And we're seeing high flying tech names get pulled back to Earth, at least the start of it. We'll talk about those, of course, the SP, and maybe some trades to take the risk safety route from a high flying tech name back to Earth. And we'll start with the profile. Here is the SP 500, it's the futures. We had the market up above the profile. Now these yellow lines are value area extremes. Think of them as a standard distribution or standard deviation table, like the bell curve. When the market's above them, there is a statistical advantage, not a guarantee, but an advantage to go short. And when the market's beneath or under these yellow lines, there's just a statistical advantage for long trades or bull type of trades and like any type of mean reversion, the market typically goes back to the middle or really more than not, goes to the other side of the profile. Again, think of this like a bell curve turned on its side. That doesn't look like much of a bell curve, but that's what the logic behind this is. That's a little bit better of a bell curve, but the focus of today's session and last few sessions outside of Tesla has been high flying tech names and they've really broken outside the profile in these really outlier type of moves, and they've created multiple trend days in a row. That which goes up does typically pull back, and sometimes the pullback is harder than the rally up. But we can't just get short and hope for the best. We do that with options or different little strategies, and we have entries and we have targets. So that's what the purpose of tonight's video is. And I'll just show the other indices. This is the Dow. Jones, uh, Dow Futures, and you're seeing the market come back inside the yellow. So for traders, that's going to be a good statistical advantage to go short on the return back inside the profile. Again, long type of strategies are favored beneath the yellow, and short type of strategies are favored above the yellow. Usually, we can structure in-out spreads, maybe even some vertical spread trades, the difference being buying, in this case, a put in the money, and then selling or hedging out with a put just a little bit outside the money. That makes it a one-to-one -one risk reward. Doesn't play for a lot of money, but plays for a good edge for your trade. A vertical spread plays a put or purchases a put outside the money, just a little bit outside the money, and sells a put beneath it for a put spread or put vertical or a bear put vertical. That's a downside type of play. Same logic on the upside, but that's not where we are in the market now. The Russell uh, RTY is actually coming all the way down to this target. So this is what the market should be doing if you're thinking about the future. Anytime it pierces outside the yellow, it typically comes back in. Now, that being said, let's take a perspective look. Actually, we'll get outside the profile and take a look at this on the daily chart. I'm gonna show you the top market cap names. So this is about technology or tech names, mainly XLK as our ETF. But these are the individual stocks that make up the XLF and of course, or XLK, and that's gonna be the tech sector and the NASDAQ. This is what ultimately moves the indices, at least the Dow and the S&P. Apple is the number one market cap right now. This actually is $1.6 trillion of market capitalization. And you can just do this on your own watch list you can put whatever category or item you would like. I'm just looking at the description, the percent change from today's session and the market cap. And this is what drives the index. So let's just take a look at these real quick. We'll look at them on the left side here. So Apple is a strong stock getting stronger, a persistent uptrend, but things that go up do eventually come back down. And that's the thought process here. It's hard to time these tops, hard to time these reversal trade, so that's not what we're looking for. We are looking for a pullback or a retracement. Many, many examples of that. So when the market gets overextended above this, in this case, 20 day moving average, or we'll see shortly the profile, there typically is an edge to go short to get it back down. And that's gonna be the green line or a trend line or value area levels. For Apple, that's roughly 360 per share and three examples, actually four, of a pullback taking place. That's where we are right now. Short-term trade only, not playing for a big reversal down, 
and not playing for much, just for a pullback. That's Apple. Microsoft shows a reversal candle and just sort of compare the prior examples of three to four, actually two to three day pullbacks. And that takes us for a target of this green line. For Microsoft, that's about 200 per share. For Amazon, it was hit with news about Walmart. So if you aren't familiar, Walmart is releasing or pl preparing plans to be a competitor for this Amazon Prime. So we won't talk about trading Walmart right now, but the bullish type of news sent Walmart shares surging and Amazon shares falling. You can see how that played out on the intraday basis. Nevertheless, it's not so dissimilar of a market that's gone four days up and then a multi-day pullback. A few days up, one, two, three, four, five, four day pullback. One, two, three, four, two day pullback. That's a lot, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a four day pullback. And now we're in the midst of a one, two, three, four in a rubber band effect that could play us back to 2,800 in Amazon. Google did not quite make a new all-time high as the other stocks in the technology sector did, but still it's just shy of this 1,500, actually closing near 1,500 in today's session. And one more, Facebook did make a new high, but reversed back inside. That was not quite as trendy, if you will, and these pullbacks are not quite as severe. In fact, Facebook just had a steep, steep, steep pullback. Remember, that's on the news that a lot of Large companies are dropping the platform for advertisement, uh, but that's what sent the shares lower, but they have recovered to a new high. So that's a little puzzling, but nonetheless. Netflix, we don't consider that a major market cap name. In fact, just for reference, it's about $216 billion. And the lowest of the trillions, trillionaire club, is Google. So it's about 20% a, a of these up here or, or less. Nevertheless, it does generate our attention and we get trades off in Netflix from uh, time to time. Its pivot point is 500 per share and its downside target, see the other examples, is roughly 460. So in out spreads, vertical spreads, or put type of positions can be played from the current reversal point, these prior highs ultimately, all the way down to these 20 day moving averages. Just quickly going through these, the logic is for mean reversion. And we can talk about this on the profile levels. So Apple is coming back potentially within the yellow. Those can be target zones. You can sell premium here and purchase put premium there or do different type of strategies for a return back to earth or return back to lower points. Microsoft is already headed there and that pivot points about 205 to re-enter the profile and possibly play again to about 200. Amazon is just uh, so strong, but it itself is pulling back. And that 2,900, maybe even 2,750 will be a little bit of a longer term, well, multi-day sessions or next week target. Google is also pulling back and Facebook. So Facebook actually is within the yellow. So that target can be 235. So I won't go too much further, but that's the lo logic and thought process for these high flying tech names that just got a little overheated, but specifically are above the profile in terms of levels to play in plan or play trades. We do so on a return beneath the yellow, targeting the red, which is a point of control, or if you're really ambitious or play for a bigger target, you can play for the opposite yellow. However you structure the trades, do keep them on the bigger picture. And that has to do with these daily charts, actually right here for the daily chart. And you can target these 20 day moving averages. And the market doesn't always tag it exactly, but when the market's overextended, that is a good spot to fade. Fade isn't to go short a high to trade for a pullback. The market probably continues the uptrend, but not without doing retracements first that's where we are here at the beginning of July for these pullback strategies, retracement strategies, and put vertical spreads as a favored short-term trade. As always, be careful and safe. This is Corey Rosenblum with tonight's Theo video for July 7th, 2020.